Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is going to be a fun one. This is my very first review of a boat, and we're gonna bring more and more boats to this channel, and we're gonna start here at McLean Sports with this StarCraft EX20 pontoon boat. So the reason I kind of wanted to add you to the channel is I kind of think they fit what we're doing, but I also think that just like a lot of power sports and recreational vehicles and other things, I find that these are the kinds of uh, products that you need to see more in depth. And really the website gives you the basics, but it doesn't really show you the details of how one stands out from the other. So we're going to continue to add boats if you want to see more boats. So do me a favor again, this is the very first review we're doing of this. Let me know in the comments section what kind of things you want to see about these boats we'll tell you about the brands that we're going to add there's a whole bunch of stuff we're going to add we'll do that in the future but really what i want to know is what do you want to know about this boat this boats in this class what are the kinds of things you want to see and do me a favor if you're into these kinds of things make sure you hit subscribe because the more subscribers and content and the better this video does the more motivation there is to make sure we do more and more boat videos so first thing i want to cover is i am not the top, top, top expert on this stuff. And that's why I love fil filming here at McLean Sports in Fredericton, New Brunswick. They really know their stuff and they've walked me through some of the things that I don't know. I'm more into the motorcycle thing and this channel is still gonna be driven by mostly motorcycles and then filled in with a whole bunch of other cool products that I find interesting. So. If you want to know more about this boat, make sure you let me know in the comments because we'll come back to this boat and other boats again and again and again. But let's get going with this review right now. So before we go too far about the specifics of this boat, let's just talk about the class in general because pontoon boats, when I grew up, were just boring boats that nobody really wanted. They were slow, you couldn't really do a whole lot with them. But over the past number of years, these things have really gained in popularity. And to be honest, maybe I'm just getting older. This is the boat that I would choose, or at least that style of boat I would choose. And there's a lot of options in there. I think you have to decide if you're looking at a pontoon boat or if you're looking at boating in general, what is it that you want in a boat? Is it the boat? itself that you want to be fun or is it the people you're with that you want to have the most fun with? And what I mean is it's kind of like taking a Ferrari around a racetrack. That's a great individual activity and that's a speedboat or a jet ski or a wave runner or whatever you've got, that kind of thing. That's kind of an individual fun where the machine itself brings the fun. What a pontoon boat does is allows you to bring your own kind of fun. Whether you're lounging, whether you want to tow some people out on a tube, whether you want to go fishing, whatever you want to do. If you're thinking about the activities that you do on the water, a pontoon boat may be best for you. If you need excitement out of the machine, then the pontoon boat may not be best for you, but they have added more and more excitement to pontoon boats. So that's one thing to keep in mind. We're gonna go through some of that. Then there's all kinds of options. So like for instance, on this boat here, little things, you've got two pontoons here. You do have a center one that runs partially, partially way, partially way, part of the way through as well. The website doesn't always tell you about that. So you have to look at that. Once you have that center pontoon, it kind of handles more like a boat. It kind of leans into the corners a little bit more, uh, breaks the water a little different way, gives you a little extra flotation. There's all kinds of benefits for that, but that's really for another video. But then you have a whole bunch of options within those pontoons. So these ones here, they have the black painted, um, you know, section on the sides here. Even the center one is sort of black painted up. At the very, very front here, let's just see if you can see it in this shot. Yeah, okay, I'm looking at my watch as a viewfinder. You can see the very bottom, not painted. But what that does in person is really changes the character of the book. It looks like a much more sporty boat. It actually looks like a more regular traditional boat from the side. It's the kind of thing that you don't really see in pictures so much, but if I was buying this, it's definitely something I would add. It looks pretty cool. And then there's again, a little details here and there that we could go throughout. One of the cool details about this boat is it's a uh, EX20, which gives you the hint that it's about 20 feet. It's actually 20 feet, 10 inches. That probably does not include the engine. So it's just a hair longer than that if you're planning to store it in your garage or something like that. But the other thing with pontoon boats is this one is only 1,850 pounds. So if you've got a car that tows, say, 3,000, 3,500 pound tow capacity, this and a trailer is going to be totally manageable with it. And you get a lot of living area for that weight. And that's one of the real big benefits of a pontoon boat as well. Fairly lightweight, especially when you consider the living space, the space on side. So this one holds about 10 people. We'll look at the weights and the specs as we get into the uh, boat itself. We also talk about engines. So you can buy different engines with this boat, but you can also equip them with different engines at the dealer. This one's equipped to have an engine up to 125 horsepower. We've got 115 on that right now. Let's go take a look at that. And we'll talk about some of the options back there. All right, so coming back to the stern of the boat, the rear of the boat, the back end of the boat, 
The nice thing about pontoon boats is there's a lot of simplicity here. So you've got a 21 gallon fuel tank here. We can do the conversion to liters. I'm in Canada, I work in liters, but 21 gallon is how it's listed on the website. So that's what you've got right in here, all set up again in that sort of pontoon type area that sort of uh, separates the water there for the motor. And again, this one is the Yamaha engine. It is 115 horsepower. Like I said, you can go up to 125. So that's gonna give you a little bit more performance and you can go down. A lot of people put maybe a 90 on this or something like that. So you can kind of make your decision based on a couple of reasons. Why would you want bigger, smaller engines? Obviously performance is one thing, but the other thing is if you're not gonna run full speed all the time, maybe 90 is enough. Maybe, you know, 110 is enough. Whatever you wanna do, you can sort of choose for yourself. And the other thing you have to think about is efficiency. So if you're gonna run a large motor all the time and not make use of that, maybe it's more efficient to run a smaller motor. You get too small and you're working a smaller motor too hard all the time. So you can make those own, your own decisions on that. And the other thing to keep in mind is that allows you some price flexibility as well. So the boat is gonna be one price, the motor is gonna be, uh, you know, some flexibility in that pricing as well. So you can kind of tailor it to your budget and your style here. A couple of things I like here. This looks like it's rust here, but it's actually some shipping tape that's still on there that I can kind of peel off there. But you've got the ladder on the back here. One of the really nice things with pontoon boats is the fact that they're spread wide, they sit a little more level or steady with the water. So it's easier to get up and on, up and out on. So of course this folds down and then telescopes out to come way down in the water. And of course you're up high off the water. So if you want to stay a little drier up here, you can do that as well. And of course you've got the platform outside of the sort of inside area there, just a little place to stand. We're gonna talk about change rooms in here. We're gonna talk about all the little features. So let's just hop inside right now and really talk about what makes this one different than other pontoon boats. So before we jump inside this, and I'm gonna break the cardinal rule, I've been told I can keep my shoes on in this boat. So it's not something I'm used to, but I will definitely Take advantage of that today. Before we go inside, I wanna show you just a piece of the StarCraft website here to show you some of the options you can have with the exterior. So exterior colors, there's blue, red, and again, some of these may not show up perfectly uh, on camera, but it's worth checking out the website, which is starcraftmarine.com, uh, just to see some of the colors you can have. And the other thing worth looking at is some of the, uh, you know, then there's colors, there's graphics, there's accents, there's the rails, there's the tubes, there's the bimini as well. We're gonna show you the bimini on here, it's powered. But there's a ton of options to customize this and make it yours, but there's also the in interior options and this is one I really wanted to show you here because you can do various things like change up the interior like that but I want to show you kind of what this looks like so seeing this in person it's a little hard to show on camera of course this would be uh, the color uh, probably that we have on camera there it is called gray sea weave there's also things like the tan teak weave all kinds of options there there's six different colors but this material I, uh, I quite like it it has some durability grip to it it's not gonna get super hot in the sun uh, just you know good whether you're walking in with your shoes like like you shouldn't be or whether you're walking with your bare feet it just seems like a nice grippy surface that's going to work well in the water and again one thing to remember is you have tons of options to customize that all up the only option down here is black on the tubes but pretty much everything above that lots of options including that bimini top that we're going to show you so let's just kind of wander in here we'll show you how the front door works here and uh you can uh, swing all kinds of things so of course that door you can swing open i'm hopping up on some a little bit rickety stairs here there we go all right coming over here couple things I really want to show you here is every pontoon boat is going to have storage underneath there. Now every pontoon boat has to make a decision about uh, practicality versus comfort and uh, other things. So although this one isn't the most comfortable seat, we're going to show you the most comfortable seat in the boat uh, in a second there. There's other little things. You could bump this storage area out, but you can see it's kind of set in back from the area. That is done for a reason. So we're gonna show you that in a second here. One of the strong suits of pontoon boats is the amount of storage in them. We're gonna show you some of that, but we're also gonna talk about some cool features like this area over here. This is a change room here. I have this one set up. There's also a change room in the rear, which is not set up. Let's go wide angle. Might skew the view a little bit, but you get a sense of what we're looking at here. So let me show you how some of this stuff works, why those uh, seats are not maximized for storage, but they're maximized for something else. Let me show you all of that right now, and we'll continue to move through the features. So the first thing I wanna show you about this pontoon boat on the inside is just how comfortable the seating in general is. Now, again, I mentioned it's not the most comfortable seats in the boat, but even the least comfortable seats in the boat are very, very comfortable. You've got a lot of area. The entire back area here is really cushy from the top to the side to the back. So very, very comfortable lounging area. It doesn't force you into certain seats. And that's one of the benefits of a pontoon style boat. Other boats with the, the bow rider front or other types of uh, styles of seating in a more traditional boat really force you into a certain seating position and not a lounging position. Now, we talked about this dig, sort of dugout area here. If you were to pull that out to here, you would maximize your under seat storage. Here's the reason they don't do that. And it's a really smart reason. 
If you're trying to stand up, you can't stand up with your legs in front of you. You really have to kind of push off that seat. Well, here, I don't have to push off the seat at all because I can get my feet underneath me while sitting, which allows me to stand up like that without using my hands. Now, you may think that's kind of a small thing, but if you think about when you're out on the water, you're not as stable as you would be on ground. So whether you have older people with you, people with mobility issues, whatever it is, it's going to be easier to stand up, even if the seas are a little bit rough, if the water's a little bit rough uh, and you're moving around, you're able to get your feet underneath you. So little things like that can mean a day on the water of enjoyment and, you know, a more comfortable experience for people who aren't used to boating. And that's the other thing. If you take people out who aren't used to being on the water, this there's so much space out here. There's never a feeling like, oh, I'm going to fall out or oh, that wave's going to come in. You're high up off the water. You've got a lot of space. It's a very, very comfortable environment and just little details like that. So we can talk about cup holders. There's lots of them here. We can talk about speakers. There's lots of those here. We can talk about deck lighting. There's all that stuff here. Let me show you that change room here as well because we talk about being comfortable let me show you how that works so for the purposes of this video I've actually got the camera on a wide angle view so it's going to kind of skew the views a little bit to the sides but I think through the center you get a better idea now I'm about six feet tall I've got my shoes on here so what do we have over here well this whole there's a metal framed contraption along the top here and it's holding a buttoned on and zippered on um, change area. So again, I'm going to use this off the side, flip it out the side here, but I could use this as a zippered change room. So again, being six feet tall, I'm ducking underneath this rail up here and you can see I can get changed here in complete privacy away from everyone else, even on the water. So this is kind of a smaller change room and maybe it's not enough for the space you want or maybe you have someone who maybe have to help change, maybe a child or something like that. Well, there's also a change room at the back. So let's show you how that one works right now as well. And then we'll show you, sort of show you how this looks when it's down by showing you that example as well. All right, so we're at the back of the boat, the stern of the boat. I'm not someone who's gonna use uh, proper boating terms all the time. I'm gonna talk about it in practical language. We're at the back end here. What you can do is you can open up this panel here and you can open up this, again, this is a lounging panel. I could lay down on this panel, lounge, suntan, we could take the bimini down, which we'll show you in a second. But right now with it up, we're just gonna open it up like this. That holds itself up, it's got the strut there. And then this is pretty cool. You're gonna lift this panel up and it sort of springs up on its own. I'm gonna let it kind of come up there and you'll do the same thing with the panel here. It springs up on its own. And I don't know if we can see it in the camera view here. I'm gonna do the sin of walking through the camera shot here and try to show you there. So again, what we're looking at there is a full uh, two, like double width or maybe even more than double width of the one that we just showed you in the front. So again, you've got so much more space there to have a change area. If you're a larger person and you need a little bit more space in that little uh, change room we had up front, you've got that. And again, even just the benefit of having this, you can have all your adults change their clothes in here, have your kids change in the other one if you wanna use a big room and a small room, but you can do it at the same time. So from a time perspective, you've got a lot of options there. So now let's look at a few more uh, areas just to the right of the shot here, and then we're gonna go to the helm and take a look at some of the features for the person driving the boat and the controls. So I'm still in the wide angle view and because we're filming indoors, the bimini top really shades the lights here, but I wanted to leave those lights kind of dimmed out by this bimini top to show you how big it is. So I'm at the very back of that chain station we just showed you. And other than the maybe the last little section here, last six, eight inches here, everything is actually under the bimini. And when you're out on the water on a boat like this, sometimes the sun can be punishingly hot. And this gives you, again, I'm six feet tall. It gives you tons of space, feels very open and free, allows the wind to come through even if you're parked and stopped, but it gives you a really good section because right up to the camera, several steps away, halfway through the boat, you have that full bimini cover. So only the front section in front of the, the helm here uh, that we were sitting in the first part is not covered by that. And then again, back here, you have some really comfortable seats and you have a table that you can pull in and out. You can stow it if you want. So if you want to spin it around for different types of ways, you've got the cup holders in there. If you need a snack to eat, to do what you got to do, you've got the option of having that table there. What I want to show you is the seat right over here. But before we do that, we're going to lower this powered bimini top. So we're going to take you outside the boat. I'm going to do it. Uh, I may speed up that uh, section of the film, but we're going to show you how this lowers through power, which is a kind of a cool way to do it. You don't have to do it manually and struggle with it. Just press a button. The whole thing comes down. Anyone can do it. Let's show you that first, and then we'll come back to this seat here. All right, so we're going to take this bimini top. Again, it comes 
all the way forward. Just this front bow section is not covered. We're going to hop in the helm here. We're going to sit down here. We'll talk about this seat in a second here. Turn the key to on and we're going to press the button for the bimini top. Now I should say the bimini top does have a bar here that would lock in place. I've uh, disabled that for now so it can be a little bit more stable in the wind when you're uh, out on the water. But you could press this button and it goes down on its own. Now what's cool about all of this is there's just no complication to it. Sometimes when you're trying to move something that large without the powered switch, it just feels complicated. It can kind of feel like it gets twisted up a little bit. But with the powered switch, of course, it's designed a little bit more strong, designed to be worked with just the switch. And suddenly you have essentially the full convertible, full top experience. So let's pull you back in. Now we've got some lighting in here. We're gonna show you the helm. We're gonna show you that seat. Uh, we're gonna move through a couple little cool features in here as well. So the reason I wanted to show you this section, this seat here, is because this is where pontoon boats kind of have that special kind of feel. This is a sort of an extra thick, extra angled, much more of a recliner type thing. And again, I feel wrong doing this, still got my shoes on, but even at six feet tall, I've got tons of foot room here. I could be much taller myself and really recline and sit upright and enjoy myself. Now, of course, the benefit here is the driver of the boat is right beside me. If I'm towing the uh, tube that you saw in the picture, that kind of thing, you can get a, a you know an apparatus or a, a stand there to help tow that tube. You can sit here and see behind you and watch the tube. Now, because I reclined that uh, convertible, that Bimini top, you actually can't really use the door because those bars run around the rear door. So you're probably gonna have it up while you're towing someone so that you can use that door in and out. Uh, but Bimini up, Bimini down, you've got great visibility here out the back and you're comfortable. So again, if you're not the one that's gonna be out on the tube or out on the towable of any kind, uh, you just wanna be comfortable. This is the most comfortable seat in the boat. And again, there's different floor plans on these models so keeping in mind that this level of seat may be something you want you can have those in different sections of the boat depending on the floor plan that you want so it's always worth looking at the website and really if you're anywhere in New Brunswick head on down to McLean's they can talk to you about some of those options those are some things that don't always show up in the floor plan shot but they really do show up uh, when you see the boat in person so having an idea of which ones are kind of upright and fine very comfortable or which ones are extremely comfortable uh, with something like this is good to know let's work our way to the helm and check out a few features there so I want to give you a basic overview of the dash here because there's one of the things that we, I won't show if I just zoom in on everything is the ability to add accessories and that kind of thing. So whether you're looking to add, you know, fish related uh, fish finders, that kind of thing, GPS pieces, whatever it is that you're looking to add, you've got some room on the dash there. You come with the standard switches here. You come with a tilt wheel here, uh, speedometer and tachometer there. Sorry, speedometer and tachometer there. Uh, speedometer is GPS calibrated. We'll zoom into that in a second. So you're dealing with the true speed as opposed to sort of an artificial speed and then if I zoom down here a little bit again that is sort of an angled foot piece there rubber padded angled foot piece so again it's instead of being flat to the floor it's angled up towards you it does give you a little bit of room one of the things I really like about this seat uh, we'll show you in a second is it really gives you a lot of space to move back from the wheel so if you want to be close to the wheel while you're driving but really use this as a comfortable seat when you're uh, not driving the boat you've got a lot of space so let's start with some of the features of the seat we'll move around and take individual looks at everything that you've got there so you can see it up close without having to swing through the dealership if you don't want to do that yet. So first thing I gotta say about the seat is it's very comfortable for me as a six footer. Now it has some features and it doesn't have some features. So we're gonna talk through why I think some of that's okay that it doesn't have some features and why I think maybe it could have different features. So first of all, the benefit of a pontoon boat is it doesn't have to like match the style of the seat beside you. Uh, so sometimes they, you know, go with more styling seats instead of just comfort seats, but this is a very comfortable seat. Of course, it swivels around, you can face things. It also has a lot of movement forward and back. So I can really get close to the controls here when I need to actually operate the boat but I can pull back when I don't need to. One of the things it doesn't have that you know a lot of boats have is sort of that flip up seat here that allows you to kind of stand and sort of kneel against that seat. I don't think you need that in this boat because again it's not rising out of the water the same way a traditional boat would. It's kind of lifting up on the water because of the pontoon style and you really do have fantastic visibility all the way around. You're sitting in a sort of a commanding type position in this seat here so in my books, that allows you to have a more comfortable seating position no matter how you're driving the boat. Um, and you really don't need that pop-up stand-up ability. And again, you could stand and drive the boat yourself. I can move that seat back and I've got the ability to stand behind the wheel. So you can stand when you need to, but for most of the time, you're gonna be relaxed and sitting on this boat in a comfortable position. You don't, you're not forced into that you know, tip up seat where you're in that kneeling position. Now let's take a look at some of the controls just so you have a sense of what's on this. And again, there's options to option these boats up, but let's show you what we've got here. All right, I'm on the tripod here, so we're gonna kind of do some zooming in and out. Hopefully uh, this kind of works for you uh, well. So we're on a full wide angle view just to show you where we are. We're gonna zoom 
all the way in and that switch in the center of your screen is where you would reach down beside the uh, driver's seat and control the bimini top so it's a little hidden you can't really read the controls but up is up down is down it's super simple we we'll come up here a little bit there's of course your throttle and uh, you can adjust everything there all typical boat stuff but where we really want to focus on is the switches right in behind the center of your shot there so we're going to move the camera around here give you a shot of what comes with this boat and uh, then go through the other controls on there as well all right, so just up from the ignition switch, and again, just down there, throttles right down over there, you've got all your uh, switches here. So you've got the horn, the bilge pump, the radio, you can turn that on and off. You've got docking lights and other types of lights, interior lights, uh, courtesy lights, and then you've got the navigation lights as well, that red, green, and of course the pole in the back for the white light. So all of those easily accessible, all right there. And again, right up from that is where you would put your various, say, fish finders, depth finders, uh, those kinds of things. Actually, we do have depth finders on this boat, we'll show you that, uh, but you know, electronics, um, you know, navigation, GPS, whatever you want to throw on the boat would fit just above where you're looking right there. Let's take a look at the gauges. All right, take a look at the gauges here. Nice bright lights here at McLean, so you can sort of see some glare in there. I'm gonna turn the uh, ignition switch on and you can see the tachometer does a full sweep. In the bottom of the tachometer that you see right there is a fuel gauge. So you've got that fuel gauge right there front and center, voltmeters on the bottom of your speedometer. And I don't know if you can see that under miles per hour, again, your speedometer's in miles per hour, is that GPS logo or GPS label there. So again, that is GPS speed, not water speed, uh, which is just a more accurate way. Down below that, there are two gauges here. They are sort of empty. Uh, so again, you can fill in those with uh, something in certain options and then you have the depth finder over there as well. So depth finder, of course, just whether you're docking, got your boat, whether you're fishing, whatever you want, sort of a basic uh, depth finder there as well. As we scroll, actually this is zoom out here, scrolling over here, you do have your stereo system here. Pretty basic system, nothing too fancy, but you do have, of course, Bluetooth uh, capability in there. So you pair your phone up to that, put everything you want in there. Now let's just show you a quick bit of storage in this boat, just to sort of, sort of show you how it works, how it looks, and then we'll wrap this one up. So taking a look underneath the helm here where we were just looking at, you do have quite a bit of storage underneath there. Again, there's literally nothing underneath there with that flat floor, you've got tons of storage. And this one does have a slam latch. Most of the, uh, the other components, especially on the back uh, where that um, chain station was is not a slam latch. So you do have that slam latch here. Let's just show you some of the uh, typical storage on this boat as well. So you can see a couple of the features there. So pretty much everywhere that's seating in this boat, just so you know where we are, again, uh, right here is the helm seat. We're behind that looking at that U-shaped dinette with that table there. Uh, I call it a dinette, that's my RV background. Uh, so what you've got here, and one thing I kind of like is you can kind of pull this up and it tilts away on a double hinge type system. So it fully clears out of the way, but it's not sitting on the floor. It's not sitting there, you know, on top of something where if you take off and forget to put it away, it's gonna just blow away and end up in the water. And then of course you have a, what feels to me like a solid Rubbermaid type material, again, corrosion resistant or corrosion proof it's just plastic right uh, but it does allow you to have lots of storage so everywhere you're seating that's what you've got sometimes you've got speakers in there you can see there's cup holders in there and then the one thing I want to show you here is this one here again just so we should go wide angle for a second you're back in that change station area right now uh, if the uh, top is down you have a little bit less access there but this is that door there and again we'll just zoom right into that this one would not be a slam latch this is one of those ones that you pull out turn and access like that. So you can turn it and shut it like that. So uh, different style latches depending on uh, where you are on the boat, but that's sort of your storage. So before we wrap up here, I want to point out as well that there are some extra lighting bits under here that we didn't show you. Just the amount of light in here is a little hard to show you, but of course, if you're docking in the dark, that's going to be um, something that really is helpful as well. There's of course the typical navigation lights. It also kind of makes it look cool. This over here is a white LED light that just makes the boat look cool as well as gives you some extra lighting on the dock. So. Let's talk about this boat just briefly and sum it up. First of all, customization options in color and to kind of make it fit whether you want it to match your style, whether you want it to match your cottage, whether you want it to match your car, whatever you want it to match. Color-wise, you can kind of have it complementing those kinds of things. Interior style, you can sort of change the feel of it with the flooring and the interior colors as well. The big thing with the pontoon boat though is deciding that you want to have fun on the water and you don't need the boat to be the primary source of fun. Again, you're not buying a sports car, you're buying more of a pickup truck type utility type vehicle and that's really what this is. It allows everyone to have the space they need just like a modern full size pickup. It allows you to take extra things along, extra coolers, extra food, you can go out for the day. One of the cool things they have here at McLean's is they have a barbecue on the back there so again, you don't have to be stuck on the dock, maybe it gets shady at a certain time of day on a dock you can get out in the middle of the lake you can take your food take your barbecue you can you know catch your fish and cook them as well whatever you want to do and again if you're taking people out you want to have some fun you've got the ability to tow something like this it 
really gives you a variety. Now this is not a wakeboard boat, there's a limit to the amount of performance it can give you, but a modern pontoon boat can give you enough performance to do some of those boating type activities while still giving you a much more enjoyable time on the water. And that's why I think these are pretty cool. So that's my review of the StarCraft uh, EX20 model. Again, this one has a few options and features on it that I kind of like, but you can option it up any way you want. If you want to know more about these types of boats or other kind of things, again, we're going to have more and more on this channel. Do me a favor. If you've made it this far, hit subscribe. We're going to continue to create out a boat playlist here. And again, if you have questions, if there's things you want me to mention, again, this is my very first boat review ever. I'm sure I've missed some of the things you want to see. Let me know the kinds of things you want to see so that my next review can be even better. And if there's questions about this exact boat and you want me to pull it back on, maybe you just want me to show you everything every bit of storage in it, something like that. Let me know, I can come back to it again and again. We'll make sure we create the videos that you want. And I wanna thank McLean Sports. Again, I'm not a full expert on this. I you know, lean towards sort of the motorcycle side of things for most of the time, but these guys are experts here. You can find a link to their uh, store in the description of this video. Uh, check them out if you're anywhere in New Brunswick, this is the place to go. They're really awesome, they'll help you out. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll talk to you in the next one.